Welcome back to the movie recap. Today's movie will be a 2019 Korean Japanese period action film titled The Battle, Roar for Victory. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. The movie begins in Duman River, where two Korean brothers travel with Japanese soldiers. Upon reaching the land, a soldier throws a bag of food as payment for their guidance. When the soldiers leave, the younger brother immediately runs to the bag, only to find a bomb inside. The kid then covers the bag with his body to protect his brother. Korea became a colony of the Empire of Japan in 1910. On March 1, 1919, the Koreans held a peaceful march, but the people were gunned down mercilessly. This brutal incident leads to the spread of the resistance movements. Japan formed the elite battalion to infiltrate the main base where the resistance hit as a countermeasure. The older brother, Huang Hae Chul, is now a leader of a squad in the Korean Independence Army. Hae Chul's group reached the Duman River border and wiped out all enemies at the Japanese guard post. They also managed to capture a young Japanese soldier. The scene changes to the Imperial Japanese Army headquarters. First Lieutenant Kusanagi reports to the head of the elite battalion, Major Yasukawa Jiro, that the Koreans already start preparing to retreat to the Russian border. After hearing the report, the Major orders the hunt for the independence fighters. Returning to Hae Chul's group, they are walking through the mountains with the captured young Japanese soldier when they come across some civilians. One of them tells Hae Chul that the elites are already coming, so they're evacuating from the mountains. After talking with the civilians, the group goes to the Samdunja defensive high ground. Suddenly, a man alerts them that the Imperial Army is coming to the Samdunja village. Meanwhile, Japanese soldiers are ransacking the village. Then, they round up the villagers, and Lieutenant Areosi asks the village chief for a man named Lee Jin Sung. But, instead of answering, the chief orders the villagers to run for their lives as he forces the lieutenant to shoot him in the head. When the villagers try to escape, the soldiers begin massacring them. Lieutenant Areosi is about to decapitate a young woman when a young captain named Jang Ha and his squad start taking them down one by one. The lieutenant orders retreat as they are being overwhelmed by Jang Ha's squad. Hei Chul's squad also arrives at the village and joins the battle. Hei Chul got Lieutenant Areosi within his range, but his shooting skill was so poor the enemy thought he was an idiot. Lieutenant Areosi orders his soldier to capture Hei Chul. Still, he quickly decapitates the Japanese soldier with one sword swing. The lieutenant runs away in fear. Afterward, Hei Chul's second in command named, Byung Gu, shows the young Japanese soldier what his comrades did to the innocent people in the village. Then, another captured Japanese soldier mocked the resistance by calling them, savage hillbillies. Angry, Hei Chul crashes and cuts off the man's balls with his bare hand. Scared, the other soldiers reveal their mission to suppress the resistance at Mount Huan. Then, Hei Chul discovers that Jang Ha plans to purposely lead the elites to Sankin. Hei Chul is worried, especially since Jang Ha's men are pretty inexperienced. Byung Gu butts in and says they have to deliver guns, then pass along Jin Sung's money to Shanghai. Therefore, even though they want to help Jang Ha, they must finish their mission first. Hei Chul advises Jang Ha to just run away and hide with his sister. But Jang Ha doesn't want to. So instead, he insists that if they lose the last border to the Japanese, it will be over for all of them. In a flashback, his sister, Hua Jia, gives Jang Ha a ring from their mother that he is meant to give to his future wife. He returns the ring to his sister, saying that she will be the one to give it to his future wife. Then all of a sudden, a grenade is thrown where they are standing. Jang Ha quickly pushes Hua Jia and covers the grenade himself, but nothing happens. Hei Chul steps out of hiding and scolds him for what he's done. Hei Chul points out that the only right thing to do is jump out of the way. Upon seeing Jang Ha's sister, Hei Chul declares that Jang Ha is his brother. Pissed, Jang Ha bashes a rock in Hei Chul's head. As the elites reach the Samdunja village, they see the bodies of the Japanese soldiers. As it turns out, the Japanese also caught an independence fighter, and they asked for a shortcut to Mount Huan. Meanwhile, the head of the resistance fund division, Lee Jin Sung, is supposed to meet with Hei Chul's group to pass on the money, but they're running late. Then all of a sudden, the Japanese soldiers fired at them. The soldiers, led by Lieutenant Kusanagi, chase after them. Luckily, Jin Sung and another fighter survive after the lieutenant stops the search. Afterward, Jin Sung finally meets with Hei Chul and Jang Ha's group. Jang Ha asks for his sister, who is said to be with Jin Sung. But the man reveals that the Japanese burned all the victims of the March 1st incident. He collected all their remains in a jar, and Hua Jia is one of the unfortunate victims. A female independence fighter detained with Hua Jia before gives Jang Ha a ring that his sister held until her last breath. On the other part of the mountain, Lieutenant Areosi kneels to Major Yaskawa. 
the head of the battalion shames Lieutenant Ariosi for running away. He then orders him and his remaining soldiers to participate in the ambush the following day. In a parallel scene, it is shown the difference between the Japanese soldiers and the Korean resistance. It's easy for Japanese soldiers to kill innocent civilians as long as they will get what they want. But the Korean resistance won't kill a defenseless captured enemy soldier. Chul decides to help Jang Ha with his mission. He says he will deliver the guns and money after the battle. Byung-gu drags him away to talk in private. Byung-gu doesn't want to face certain death by battling with the elites. But Chul makes him realize there's no other way for them to be free than to free their country. The next day, Jin Sung continued to deliver the money to Bongo Dong. Chul says that he will take over once the battle is finished. After planning their strategy, Jang Ha holds Hua Jia and all the victims of the March 1st incident's ash, readying himself for the incoming fight. At the elite battalion's camp, Major Yaskawa orders the rescue of the young Japanese soldier. Lieutenant Areosi suddenly shows up and begs Major Yaskawa to permit him to lead the attack. To his surprise, the Major cuts off his left index finger and orders him to capture the independence fighters before the blood on his wound gets dry. Meanwhile, the captured Japanese soldier and the survivor of the village attack are traveling away from the battle with two young independence fighters. The young Japanese soldier finally introduces himself as Yukio. While resting, they seem to form a bond with each other. But their bond is cut short when the Japanese soldiers appear and corner them. The female independence fighter jumps off the falls to fight an enemy soldier. Yukio also helps them by pretending to kill Gay Dong and letting him escape. He also tells his comrades to let go of the survivor named Chun He, but they don't comply. Gay Dong comes rushing to the resistance to tell them what happened. But they cannot compromise the mission by saving Yukio, Chun He, and the other fighter. Gay Dong tries to reason with Jang Ha, but the elite battalion is already on their way to them. They aim to get to the stone grave on top of Goryeo Ridge. Not wanting to abandon the kids, Hei Chul decides to rescue them. While the rest will act according to the plan, Hei Chul's squad will follow to the stone grave. The Japanese soldiers then begin charging at them. Back in the Japanese camp, Major Yaskawa talks to Yukio while Chun he is on the verge of being sexually violated. Yukio bravely tells Major Yaskawa that he feels ashamed of how the Japanese treat the Koreans. However, the Major didn't like Yukio's words and ordered him to commit seppuku. As Yukio plunges the katana into his body, a grenade drops into the tent. The soldiers immediately evacuate Major Yaskawa, but they are shot as soon as they leave the tent. Heichul shows up and helps Yukio. On the other tent, Gay Dong and Chun he attack the soldier who threatens to violate her. But they are no match for the soldier. Yukio shows up to stab the man, but he just stabs Yukio back. Fortunately, the female independence fighter finishes him off before he harms Chun He. Meanwhile, Hei Chul rescues the captured resistance member. But the man reveals to him that his capture is all according to the plan of Jang Ha. He also tells them to leave him so he can finish his mission. Hei Chul agrees to leave him, yet he promises that they will find a way to rescue him. After a successful rescue operation, the independence fighters immediately escape. While running, a bullet hits Chun He's bag, breaking the jar of ashes of their comrades. Looking at the scattered ashes on the ground, Hei Chul orders Byung Gu to take the kids and go ahead while taking the enemy head on. Using his sword, Hei Chul butchers the Japanese soldiers. Byung Gu and the kids come across Jin Sung. Riding a horse, he accompanies Gay Dong and Chun He to Bongo Dong. As Byung Gu and the female fighter return to the battlefield, Byung Gu tells Yukio he is now free. More Japanese soldiers arrive, and Hei Chul decides to retreat after collecting most of the ashes on the ground. As they reach the Goryeo Ridge, Jang Ha gets in position on time. The resistance runs past the stone grave where a machine gun is hiding. Jang Ha then shoes every Japanese soldier on sight. Hei Chul's group also provides additional firepower by throwing grenades and firing at the enemies. But Lt. Areosi is determined to get his revenge. On the other side of the mountain, Lt. Kusanagi and his squad spot Jin Sung and the kids on the other side of the mountain. They start chasing them, and Jin Sung sacrifices himself so Gay Dong and Chun he can escape. Unfortunately, they are still spotted by Lt. Kusanagi and are also currently chased by Lt. Areosi. Luckily, Gay Dong and Chun he manage to escape and meet with Hei Chul's group. Realizing they have already lost Jin Sung, Hei Chul hands the ashes to Chun he He then orders them to continue moving forward until they reach the commander. The Korean resistance and the Japanese army are on different sides of the mountains. When the Japanese spot Gay Dong and Chun he Jang Ha runs the other way. They start firing, but no one lands a bullet on him. But when the resistance shoots back, everything is a hit. The battle of two snipers begins as Byung Gu chases after the sniper targets Jang Ha. Byung Gu manages to hit the enemy sniper, 
but the enemy also shoots Jiang Ha in the side of his chest. The wound slows down Jiang Ha a bit. Meanwhile, Hei Chul and his group witness the number of Japanese reinforcements. They are thinking of a way to rescue the captured independence fighter. A scout informs Major Yaskawa of the recent events, and he orders them to capture the resistance before they cross Russia. The captured fighter is stabbed and left to die as per Major Yaskawa's order. Hei Chul immediately runs to him when the enemies are gone. The man reveals Jiang Ha's true mission is to lure the elites to Sankin and hold them off as long as possible. Then, their comrades from Bongo Dong will come to eliminate the elite battalion. Realizing that Jiang Ha will die, whether the mission will be successful or not, Hei Chul runs after him. Upon reaching Bongo Dong, Jiang Ha throws smoke grenades. As the Japanese soldiers blindly follow him, Jiang Ha triggers an explosion. He then goes to a storage house where he stores weapons to fight the enemies. The Japanese soldiers corner and throw grenades inside the storage house. After the explosion, Jiang Ha starts to see his dead sister. When Lieutenant Kusanagi is about to execute him, Hei Chul and the other independence fighter arrive and kill the enemies. The others immediately attend to Jiang Ha while Hei Chul has a sword fight with Lieutenant Kusanagi. Their battle causes Hei Chul's sword, but he manages to defeat the lieutenant. As Lieutenant Kusanagi falls to his death, Lieutenant Ariosi runs away again. But it didn't take a while before Major Yaskawa's forces arrived. Upon seeing Hei Chul running away, Major Yaskawa orders his men to chase all of the independence fighters. The resistance struggles as the enemy showers explosives on them. They try to fight back while running, but they start running out of ammo, so they have no choice but to run. And again, another younger brother of Hei Chul saves him from an explosion as Jiang Ha shields Hei Chul from the enemy's attack. Angry, Hei Chul charges at the enemy while only carrying his broken sword. But Major Yaskawa was suddenly shot. It turns out that the reinforcements of the Korean Independence Army, National Association Army, Military Armed Forces, and Korean Democratic Corps began their move. They make bullets rain on the surrounding Japanese soldiers. The medical team also attends to Jang Ha and the other wounded fighters. Major Yaskawa forbids his soldiers to retreat and threatens to kill them if they do. Then, Hei Chul and Major Yaskawa fight. Hei Chul manages to beat Major Yaskawa using the Major's own katana. However, Hei Chul doesn't finish him off and tells him to leave Korea with his men instead. Major Yaskawa's men immediately attend to him while other soldiers begin surrendering. Then, we see the coward Lieutenant Ariosi comes across the commander of the Korean Independence Army himself, Hong Bom Du. But, as it turns out, he's already surrounded by the resistance. Afterward, Commander Bom Du commends Hei Chul for what he has done. The movie ends with the Korean Independence Army scattering the ashes of the March 1st incident victims into the top of the ridge, honoring their sacrifice that ignites the heart of the resistance. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.